Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So it's the start of November, we're well into autumn now and for a lot of people the gardening season's over but there's still things that you can sow this month, there's still things that you can get into the ground for a crop later on this year and early into next year. Keep watching, I'll show you what I'm sowing this month. November is a great time to get your garlic in and it's a good time to get a move on with your garlic before the ground starts to freeze and the ground starts to get solid and you can't get your garlic into the ground anymore and we use this technique of growing our garlic where we where we mulch the soil and then cover that compost with cardboard and we cut holes through the cardboard and plant our garlic you can see our garlic already coming through and this was planted about a week ago so I'll get a video out in the next week or so about how we plant our garlic and why we plant our garlic like this. It's quite a unique method, so do go and check it out when I get the video out and it'll explain to you exactly the, my thinking process behind why I do it like this. If you're in a slightly warmer climate, I mean for me in Yorkshire it's a little bit too, it's going to get a little bit too soggy this month to get onion sets in the ground. It's still not too bad if you get a move on this in the first week or so of November. But if you wait till towards the end of November, onion sets, it gets a little bit late for onion sets, overwintering onion sets. But it's not too late for onion seeds. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to be sowing this month is going to be greenhouse growing and in the house growing. So let's get in, into the greenhouse and I'll show you what we're growing in here. These are overwintering onions that are planted in September and October and these are ready to go out into the ground. This is Senshu, there's radar over here as well and this week these are going to get planted out into the ground so I'm going to make some space. Um, I'm just about I've just about finished clearing some space for the onions and these are going to be going into the ground as soon as I get a little bit of a chance for that. It's getting a little bit wet so if you haven't already sown broad beans directly into the ground now's a great time to get them sown in pots and I've got loads of pots of broad beans. So I've sown all of these pots of broad beans and once they come up, I'm going to overwinter them in here. And as long as the ground's soft enough and workable enough, these are going to go out into the ground if they get established before the ground freezes. If the ground froze, then I wouldn't put these outside anymore. It, it is starting to get a little bit cold in the greenhouse overnight. So um, I've got myself a little, I've made myself a little DIY greenhouse heater. Let's get this guy lit up. And I'll show you how I'm, I've got a video coming out on how I made this greenhouse heater and what the whole logic behind it is. And I'll get a video out on that in the next week or two as well. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be really interesting. It's a free greenhouse heater, so you can't go wrong with it. This one's still a great month for salad leaves. And this is loads of lettuce here. I'm clearing ground on my greenhouse floor and these are going to get planted out so I'm going to move those pots are going to go back into the house there's some lemons and dates they're going to go into the house and I'll get these planted into this area here some of those chilies will come out in the next couple of weeks and those lettuces will fill this greenhouse and I'll have produce coming up all the way through see I've, it's November and I've still got tomatoes ripening so with a bit of preparation and a bit of thought you can keep growing um, and once these once these chili some of these chili plants come out those those lettuces and those salads will just completely fill this so that's another one that you can get you can get loads of salad leaves into the ground because we're putting our gardens to bed and we want to rest our beds over winter and we want to protect our beds over winter one of the best ways is putting cover crops onto the ground and getting cover crops established it's still not too late for cover crops there's cover crops that i've got established uh, i sowed them in october but in these patches i had squash plants and courgette plants that were still there and I took those out earlier this week and I've sowed my uh, I've sowed some more mustard in place. You can still get certain cover crops like mustard and rice that'll get themselves established in the cold and they'll keep your garden protected all the way through winter. So I'm just getting these sticks into place because what I'm gonna do at the base of these is I'm gonna sow some peas into the ground here. See, peas are a really good hardy crop. They're surprisingly hardy. Something like Kelvedon Wonder will do really well over winter. They might need a little bit of protection from when it's really frosty and really cold. But, but other than that, 
if you get your peas established, I mean, normally what we do is we grow our peas in gutters and then we plant, transplant those gutter peas into the ground and we get the sticks in the ground. But if you wanted to, the ground's still warm enough to get your peas established into the ground now. Or you can go with the gutter method and then just transplant them in, into the ground afterwards. The, there's some seeds now that we're going to get established this month and we're going to need a little bit of more equipment to get them started and get them going through winter but we're gonna to have to head into the house for that. So come on, come with me. So this month, it's time to get some of this old equipment out and dust them off and get them cleaned up and get them ready to get working again. It's been close to about eight months since I've had these in use. So it's important to check that they're all working fine. Check if you've got timers on them to get the timers working. And the seeds that we're gonna get sowing is we're gonna start sowing our chilies towards the end of the month. We're not going to go all out and we're not going to sow them all in one go. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with our really extremely hot peppers. So our real super hots like your Carolina Reapers, your Trinidad Marugas. The seeds that take a few weeks to get germinated. Even with pro heated propagators, they can take a couple of weeks to get germinated. So towards the end of November, if we start getting our seeds planted, remember we have quite a unique way of growing our chili seeds. We soak them in tea and I've done a video exactly on why we do that and how we do that and I'll leave a link for it up here and I'll leave a link to, at the end of this video as well so go and check that out. It'll show you exactly why we soak them in tea before we grow them. But I'm going to start off with my Carolina Reapers and all your habanero types and I'm going to get them sown probably the last week of this month. Last year we sowed them a little bit late, we sowed them mid-December and we started harvesting chilies from about June, July onwards but our real harvest came in September and October and we've still got loads of chilies on the plants, loads still to harvest yet. But because they are such a long growing plant, get them sown even earlier. So November for me is an ideal time to get them sown if you're growing them as annuals, but if you're overwintering them, then obviously that's gonna be an absolute bonus. There's one herb that we grow all year round and that's coriander. It doesn't need much light and it's surprisingly hardy as well. But we move from growing it outside in the frost and in the cold to growing it on windowsills in the house. So on a sunny windowsill, you can grow coriander all year round. So we grow our coriander by taking seeds like that, we soak it and then we wrap them in a cloth and then we sprout them in there and then put them in pots or onto the ground once they've sprouted. There's a whole video on that. It's probably the best video on growing coriander on YouTube. Go and check it out. I'll leave a link for it up here. But we grow coriander in pots on windowsills right now. So we'll sprout a few. The amount of seeds that we sow right now will go down quite a bit. So instead of soaking cups full at a time, I'm only going to be soaking enough for a couple of pots that we can just fit on our kitchen windowsill. And that will allow us to grow coriander all the way through the year. And we'll just do successional sowing. So as soon as we start harvesting from one pot, we'll plant another pot. And I've explained all that and I've explained the technique in that video. So do go and check it out. That's a quick run through of the seeds that I'm going to be sowing this month. And some of the things that you can try as well. It's not over. The gardening season by far is not over. I think this time of the year is the time when the gardening season is just beginning. And I'll explain that. I'll do a video explaining why, why I think that. And I'll lay out my arguments. But if you do like what you've seen, make sure you hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. I also make videos on Patreon. So if you want to support our channel, that's a great way of supporting us. I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.